Okay, we're going to cover chapter 7 in this video. Uh, I'm going to try to do these videos off and on. And this is for the inventory evaluation. This is to make up for the class that we didn't have or we missed. And I had some questions about it. So I came up with some examples on how to do inventory. We're going to do periodic and perpetual. And uh, this is the information right here. That is the information pool. If it's in parentheses, that means we sold it. Otherwise, we purchased it. And that's why these are blank because it was a sales price. Okay. This calculation here is the goods available for sale that we have. I went through and made all the beginning inventory plus the purchases. So we have a total of $1,460 at a cost of $46,930. Then over here is how many units we sold, which is $1,130. So here we have the $1,460 that we purchased. And here, if you want, I'll do it like this. We sold $1,130. So if you just do a summation of those, you see we have 330 units left. Okay, for the goods available for sale, I know I have that in there. We have the 46,930. Now, for the ending inventory, we have to take a calculation here. Remember, this is first in, first out. So we have 330 units left. So the ones we have left are the last ones we purchased. So we have 270 units at the $34. And then we need another 60 units to get to the to the 330, and that would be at $33. So if you multiply these out, it gives us our values. Okay, which is 9180, and that would be 1980 for a total of 1160. Okay, so over here we would have equal. Um, 1160. So the goods available for sale then would be those two added together. Except we don't want goods available for sale. That's in the inventory. We want to actually subtract those. Sorry. And the cost of goods sold then is 35,770. Okay, we're going to use the same information that we had up above. So the uh, goods available for sale is still that one. And I want to do the weighted average at the same time since I'm down here. And that would also be, we we'll always start with that same number. Okay. But we have to come over here for the ending inventory. Now this is last in, first out. So the ones we have left are the first ones that we purchased. So we'd have 320 at the 30. And we would have 10 at the 32. Okay. So we multiply those out. 9600 okay we got those up so my ending inventory is 9920 so I have that is equal to 9920 and then here I would simply do what I did before to get the cost of goods sold I would subtract those two and get thirty seven thousand ten dollars okay for the weighted average well the weighted average how we would do we have a total of 46,930. Number of units that we have is the 1460. So to get the average cost per unit, we equal, we divide those two. Now I use an equal round function so that I don't get too many in here, too many decimals. And let's say we carry it to, I uh, usually carry it to three decimal places. That's just, okay. Um, so three decimal places. So the ending inventory then would be equal to the 330 times the 32,144. And this is equal to then this cell minus this one or 36,322,48. Okay, that is the periodic system. That's how you calculate that. Remember, first in, first out. <clears throat> it's what the end of the inventory is what you purchased last. You sold the ones that were at the beginning. Last in, first out are the ones you have that you purchased first. <clears throat> Those are the ones you have left. Okay. For the perpetual, I already have this started. I just, what I have up there is the beginning inventory. So on May 5th, we purchased 560 
at 32. I left this calculation in here. Okay, so that leaves us 320 at 30 and 560 at 32. Okay, this one is these two, multiply these two together and then multiply those two together and add them together and that gives you this. If you look there, that's the formula that I used for that. Okay, on May 8th, this is first in, first out. We sold a total of 340. That's what the 340 is. Well, it's first in, first out. So that leaves, means we sold 32 at 30. And then we still need another 20 because we sold 340. And that would be at 32. Okay, for a total of 10,240. That leaves us then 540 because we have the last 20 was from there. And that would be at 32. Okay. And then on May 16th, we sold another 280, which then gives us a lot of choice at 32, which leaves us in 260 at 32 for that total. On May 20th, we purchased 310, not 310, at 33 for that total, which then gives us the 260 at 32 and 310 at 33 okay so like i said i left the formula just kind of in here then we sold 350 well it's first in first out so we sold the 260 at 32 and then we sold another 90 to get to the 350 and that had to be at 33 and what that leaves us then is 220 at 33 May 27th, we purchased 270 at 34 for a total of 9180. So that leaves us 220 at 33 and 270 at 34 for a total of 16,440. And then here on May 29th, we finally sold 160 at 33, which leaves us. 60 at 33 and 270 at 34 for a total of 11,160. This down here is the number of units we sold and this is the cost of what we sold. Okay. Now we do the same thing for LIFO. Now this is last in first out. So the last ones we purchased are the first ones we sell. Okay. So here we bought 560 at 32 which gives me 3320 at 30 and 560 at 32. Okay, and here I sold 340. That should be 560. Okay, I sold 340. Well, it's last in, first out, so that 340 came from the 32 because those were the last ones we purchased which then leaves us 320 at 30 and 220 at 32. Okay, so those are the last ones that we purchased, so those are the first ones we sell. And then we sold an additional, on May 16th, uh, we sold an additional 280. Well, you notice here we only have 220 that we can sell. So I always bring those down first. You don't have to. But that'd be the 32, and then I got to go to the one above that because I still need another 60 at 30, and so that leaves me then 260 at the 30 for 7,800. Then we purchase the 310 at 33, which leaves 260 at 30. I always put the oldest one on top, 310, so I don't get confused of which ones I purchased last because otherwise you do you can and then May 24th we sold 350 but again you notice the last ones purchased we only purchased 310 so that's what we have to put here 310 at 33 and then we also need an additional 40 units at $30 for a total of 11,430 which would then leave us 220 at 30 because you take 40 from the 260 
And on May 27th, we purchased an additional 270 at 34, which leaves us 220 at 30 and 270 at 34. Okay. And then here we sold 160. Well, the 270 is the last ones we purchased, so those are the ones we sold. 160 at 34, which gives me the 5440, which leaves me then 220 at 30 and 110 at 34. Okay, that is the LIFO. It's last in, first out. So always go by the last purchase that you made and then work your way up. And then we have this moving average thing, or this called sometimes the weighted moving average, or whatever you want to call it. But this is one we recalculate after each transaction. And it's, it probably won't be too bad. Uh, we have 56 at 560 at 32. Okay. So what we have here is you take equal, we have 320 plus the 560. I must have left that one in there. I probably should have left the other one in there, okay? Because what it, which gives me, yeah, 2725, okay. And then on the units sold, I have, I sold 340. You notice I already have the calculation here. That's just that formula right there. You bring that one down here and then multiply it. And then that will leave us then equal to 880 plus what I do is, is this one so I can do the same formulas all the way across. Okay, 540. And then what I can do is actually copy that down so I don't have to keep recalculating it. It's a dangerous way, but that's okay. Um, and then May 16th, I sold an additional 280, and that happened to be the same price. You recalculate these totals after each one. You notice this one changed just a little bit. And then I'm up to May 20th, and I purchased 310 at 33. Okay, and that, that takes care of itself over there. And here I sold. 350. Okay, you notice it, how it recalculates everything. And on this one, I purchased an additional 270 at 34. And here I sold 160. Okay, so you notice how this recalculates everything. And you know, if you want to, you can re I'll format this so it's easier to see uh, for the commas so you can see what's going on with it but this week this is recalculated after each transaction okay you take the number of units plus what you purchased minus what you sold to get the balance and then you calculate the totals over here so you take 9600 plus the 17920 and that gives you this and then this one is simply those two divided Okay, then when you sell it, you take this number, you put it here, number of units you sold, multiply it out, and then you subtract them. Okay, subtract the number of units, 880 minus the 340, the 27,520 minus the 10,632, and then you just keep doing it that way. Okay, that is the moving average or the weighted moving average, whatever you want to call it. But that's the three basic methods that you have for inventories, this periodic and perpetual. And then, I'll, like I said, I'll get a video out there for the dollar value in a second, or a little bit anyway. Okay, talk to you later.